what is up guys I'm Luke and today um, I've made my 90 subscriber special for you guys and it is the stick of awesomeness in Minecraft well actually uh, what it does is that it actually uh, just gives you a little force field thing uh, it's pretty much like techniques it's blah, telekinesis or something because uh, uh, you can control other stuff and, and things such as um, in the demonstration maybe you ha uh, didn't see it um, but you might have heard it uh, it is that the skeleton arrow uh, I controlled it to hit the zombie like um, behind me or something so yeah that's pretty cool so this is actually a pretty big invention so Let's get to it. So first, uh, we have uh, this set of command blocks, and uh, what you have to know is that uh, we have a scoreboard uh, that is the name of rot, and it is a stat dot use item dot minecraft dot fishing rot score. So it adds one whenever you um, use a fishing rot, like so. And yeah. So that's the scoreboard. Now let's get to the thing. So um, this item I'm holding in hand is called, you know, the stick of awesomeness, and uh, it's a fishing rod. So if you use it, it will add one to the uh, rod scoreboard. So uh, it is a custom item. The name is stick of awesomeness, and it has unbreaking level 100. And this command block tests for it. So this long command uh, will be in the description so you can check that out uh, because this little command is pretty long so I decided to put it in the description instead of just talking about it and stuff but yeah so it tests for a player that has a score of 1 I mean a score of rod of 1 so uh, just when you use the stick of awesomeness and it tests it also tests for the infantry uh, and uh, it wants to find a fishing rod with um, enchantment ID 34 which is unbreaking and level 100 which is what my stick of awesomeness has and the name is stick of awesomeness so it tests for this exact item any other fishing rod would not work so yeah, when you when you use the fishing rod, I mean the stick of awesomeness, as you can see on the right, my score adds one. So yeah, and then uh, you can see when I when I use it the second time, it resets back to zero. So this command block does it. Um, it does um, it sets uh, the nearest player who has the uh, score of rod of minimum two to zero so when I reach two in a scoreboard I get reset it back to zero also this command block uh, tests for if this command block is unsuccessful so if this command block uh, cannot find the appropriate player then this command block will activate I mean uh, this command block will meet its requirements and so this comparator turns on and then it sets a block and then it removes the block and it kills every with a skull which I'll uh, get onto later so about these two set block commands um, this one uh, sets a redstone block right here so it stops all the commands from working which I'll actually get onto later and you know and then uh, this one simply sets it back to air. Now if the player meets the uh, test for requirements uh, this comparator will turn on and activating this command block which sets this glass block into a wrestling block which activates these row of commands. Well uh, first it activates these two. This one fills 
this row into resin blocks. Ah, uh, I mean into air. And this one sets it into resin blocks. Now for the complicated part, we got uh, this row of command blocks and this row of command blocks. Now, every command block in this row is pretty much similar, but with just a little different settings. I mean, just a little different variations. And this one is totally different command, but this row is pretty much similar, just with some different variations. So, uh, first we have this row which is the sum with the, sc with the skull commands so they all summon a with the skull with the custom name relative to the player and this row right here is the tp at e type equals non player commands so um all these commands will be in the description and um uh, i will categorize them into summon with the skull and tp at e type equals non player commands so you can find them more easily because I know it's complicated so basically what these do is that they uh, execute on a with a skull that has a custom name to teleport um, entities relative to the with the skulls themselves so um, I just discovered that uh, you can actually uh, do uh, TP and you can select a um, cubic area instead of a radius as you can see in here so um, that helps a lot there's nothing much to say that helps a lot and um, you can you can either um, just end the video right now and then copy all the commands in the description or you can listen to me explaining all the logic behind this. So make your decision. All right, we move on. All right, so here comes the hard part. So uh, first, you have to imagine um, this being a two uh, D plane. So this is plus z, this is plus x, and you're looking down from the sky. And this glowstone block is the player. All right, ready? Now we start. So the lower row of the command blocks constantly summon um, with the skulls with a custom name relative to the player. So um, it's all like execute at p someone with the skull with the custom name or something like that. So uh, this is the player, and we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with the skulls all together and they are summoned uh, about at the same time but the order doesn't matter, you can actually put them in a random order or something so it, it, it will not um, matter alright so first it summons uh, this with the skull named B and this one named H, and this one named F this one named K, and L and then J and M and lost the I. So uh, I just told you that the order doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it still doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna tell you my order. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So first, if we get a button, okay. Um. Uh, now about the TP commands. Um, I just told you that the um. With the skulls can select a uh, cubic area to teleport the entities. So let me explain that. So first, B selects the this cubic area, and then uh, anyone, anything, any entity in this in that cubic area that I just showed you will be teleported plus Z. So it would be teleported like this, and then uh, H selects this part, and then all the entities in this uh, region will be teleported uh, to plus Z and plus X. So it teleports like this, 
so say if a zombie is in here and it's in the region of H it will teleport to here and then here and then here until it is something about in here until it's out of this range and the range is 10 blocks as you can see right here so and then now say a skeleton is in here still in the H region and it will teleport and teleport and teleport alright so you just clear all these okay now um, you may wonder that um, I mean you may see that the region of B and the region of H is overlapped so what will happen with the TP commands well it will still work but it works like this so say a creeper is in here and then first B teleports it up and then H teleports it uh, diagonally like this and it will still be teleported and now it is not uh, in the uh, overlapped region anymore so it will keep teleporting into here because it is in the H region so that's the problem solved it will not malfunction or anything so that's why you can put it in the random order now uh, F F select this region and so um, all the entities teleport to plus X which is this direction so say a spider is in here it will be teleported to here it'll be teleported to here and then here and then here and then here and then it will not teleport again until it comes in here and then it will teleport it to here and it will not teleport again until it goes into here and then it teleports into here so that kind of makes a force field alright so now um, into the K region so the K region you probably have guessed it it's this part and then but but this time is kind of different um, for these uh, it's like uh, when you select this region it teleports them from here to here so it's just the same direction but not but not for this because um, uh, the D, X, D, Y, D, Z um, selectors can only select a uh, positive um, number so it can only select this but not like this because that's negative X so what I did here is that uh, I made K select this region and then let all the entities teleport like this in this direction so say a um, zombie is in here it'll teleport to here like this in this direction so yeah and now for L so L uh, you may have guessed it selects this region and then all the entities in the L region will teleport to minus Z like so now for the J region so the J region is this so the width of skull J selects this area and then all the entities in here will teleport in this direction which is minus X minus Z alright so we're on the last two now this is the M region and then every entity in here in the M region will teleport to this direction alright so now we're on to the last one uh, the I region you have guessed it this one now all the entities yes they teleport in this direction So, uh, that is pretty much it of the TP and summon commands. And I just realized that I left off one thing, which is this, this command, which kills all with the skulls. So, 
this is actually in this order, so it activates this one first, and this one, and this one, and this one like that. So I will link a video in the description, uh, which is to um, Citrian's video of him explaining about these orders and stuff. So first it kills all the Wither Skulls, and then it summons the new ones. And so the system works, and you can teleport. So yeah, uh, now about a little more of the overlapping problem. Uh, say, if like a an entity is is in here, so um, is in the B, an H, an F region, all three of them. So first it teleports B. I mean, so first B teleports it into here, and then H teleports it into here, uh, and then it's not in the F region anymore. But if you're putting it in a random order, say like, say like H teleports first, so H teleports first, now it's in neither B or F, so it just teleports and goes on. Uh, and say if you set that um, F teleports first, so say it's in here, and F teleports it to here, and there's in the H region teleport to here, and it doesn't malfunction. So yeah, uh, this concept is pretty awesome, I think. Because well, one, I made it, and two, I really do think this is awesome because now we can have a like square force field or something. So yeah. Uh, and I think that's it for the video. I don't... I have no idea. I guess that's it? Have I missed out anything? I don't think so. So yeah. So, uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want more of these. And you can leave a comment for suggestion. So yeah. Uh, that's it for the video. Um, and... Christian!